Hello and welcome. If we haven't met before, my name is James Font and I believe the world of Australian wine is beautiful and complex. So I create videos for wine lovers to learn more about the world of wine. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for more wine videos like this one here tonight. If we haven't met before, my name is James Follett and I love wine. And tonight I am sipping on a bottle of, oh, let's zoom in there, Lang Miles, Lang Miles Colonel 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's hopefully get that so the background doesn't blur out. But the 20, 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon from Lang Mile is what I'm sipping on here this evening. So let's zoom back out and get me back in frame so i'm going to be sipping on that enjoying this particular wine it's a delicious Sabinet, cabernet sauvignon it, i got it part of my laying mile subscription with them um on their zealous followers the three pack that i get every quarter it was in one of those which is exciting so that's what i'm sipping on this evening it's a delicious cabernet sauvignon I saw it was listed on their website for about $50 earlier this week. And to get into the wine gallery visit, let's jump straight into, into that and enjoy the virtual world of art. So, are you excited about the virtual art? I am. So, we've got this coming up. So we're going to go through and enjoy looking at the virtual gallery, the Archibald Prize. If you go on the website and vote, you can potentially win prize money for the crowd's favorite. So if I was exit full screen, and before I go back into full screen, there's a People's Choice Awards where you can potentially win a $2,000 cash prize. And the award also carries a $5,000 cash prize for the winning artist and the voting closes 5 p.m. Sunday 29th of August 2021. So that is important to be aware of if you are entering this competition and helping the people choose. So let's jump back into this. I've had a brief look this afternoon about some, at some of the pieces, but let's start navigating around so it gives us an introduction to what the archibald prize is so the archibald prize is australia's preeminent portraiture event and an icon of australian artistic endeavor anz is proud to be presenting partner for the 12th year in a row in the 100th year of this important prize as an organization anz is committed to helping communities thrive the Archibald Prize is a great demonstrative demonstration of diverse, thriving culture. It promotes our finest creative talent while highlighting unique characters who influence and contribute to our society. We are also pleased to support the Art Gallery of New South Wales in taking the exhibition on a tour of regional towns in Victoria and New South Wales. This allows a wider this allows a wider audience to experience and enjoy the inspirational work of Australia's vibrant and flourishing artistic community. Mark Whelan, Group Executive, Institutional ANZ. And some of the other partners are also listed there. So let's enter the Solman Prize into the room. So these portraits, uh, or this feels more less like portraiture as much as the single shot but they're more like group groups of people the one that immediately catches my eye is not this one but i like the colors so let's see if i can get back to here so you can see the painting that's no, that's a nicer view of the painting so this is, oh, it talks about the summer prize it's just really interesting navigating the virtual experience as well. 
So yeah, we're looking at the painting. The painting's good. I can zoom in. So the summon prize, the for subject genre or mural painting, this prize is in its 85th year and is awarded to the best subject painting, genre painting or mural project by an artist in Australia. So perhaps the most idiosyncratic of the gallery's prizes, the Salmon presents the breadth of current Australian painting practice and its prevailing ideas and aesthetics. Whether figurative or abstract, these paintings tell a story reflecting the diversity of thought and experience of Australian painters and their modes of expression. From traditional subjects, including still life, landscape or narrative scenes to assertive declarations on social or political issues or explorations of the act of painting itself, each summon prize exhibition is shaped by the eye and taste of its judge. This year, the invited judge was artist Elizabeth Cummings. So we've got a very interesting selection here of art. This first painting is an acrylic on campus, personal, draws on intimate personal experience, examine ways, meaning, and memory are held in object, language, and place. This work combines a Banksia Eric Folia found near my studio in Alexandria, New South Wales, with a screenshot of Nick's architectural structure. It has a view of Bondi and Nat's image from the top of a cliff fall in Sea Town in England. The deliberate recontextualizing of these seemingly unrelated elements offers a way to experience them simultaneously for me. The bank she has become kind of a souvenir and represents my various identities, mother, Australian artist, homemaker, partner, daughter. We planted a Banksia robo on my son's placenta in our backyard. The word Banksia after English botanist Joseph Banks also holds clues to Australia's colonial history. Sally Anderson, 2021. It's really interesting that they describe those are screenshots because I can clearly see clearly that that's a Banksia there in the middle. The screenshots, I can't see it for around it. Uh, the murals, out of what's compelling, I think my favorite piece of art in this room, just from having a brief look, this one gets me curious about what's going on. It's like winter in Australia. What's happening with this? the people in this landscape. It's an interesting piece. Just sit there and appreciate that for a bit. Just like the curiosity, them kind of looking over, looking to the side. Very interesting experience. It's almost like they're lining up for an Apple store event in New York. When it's cold outside, well prepared, except for the trees in the background with how kind of cold it looks. I think I'm probably more of a fan of kind of this still life painting. It's got a great piece going there. You got the wine bottle as part of that canvas, as well as some fruit, some tea, some coffee, a flower in a vase a plate, a book. John Bocos, Summon Prize 2021 finals. Rosé and lemons, oil on canvas. So we got wine and we've got wine in art here this evening. So we've got a rosé. So in rosé and lemons, the casual clutter of domestic life takes center stage. This painting is my way of showing beauty in the everyday world. I like the struggle between a realistic depiction and the abstract nature of painting. Painting, I believe, should always be a response primarily to a subject, not a photo-like rendering of it. This is not a glamorous scene. It's about accessible beauty. I'm often struck with how interesting simple objects can be. This might technically fall outside 
of the Archibald prize, but I think rosé and lemons here is one of my favorites because I was thinking they were bananas in the bowl, but reading the title, probably lemons. It's a really beautiful, striking picture. This would be one I'd want to sit and stare at for a little while, just take it in. I, if I was there in person at the gallery, I'd probably put like, look at it from the side to try and see the texture of how, how it's coming along. Um, as I think about what the oil on canvas, like you can see the texture there in the plate. Let's get really, see how close I can get in there. Just the texture that's coming through as part of the art with the way the oil has been done on the canvas. I can see is also really striking and just kind of in and around the coffee mug that shine from the light. Some of the texture up here as well is really exciting. Is that part of that particular piece of work? The other one. Interesting. Makes me wonder what's going on here. It's like Elon Musk tried to send an animal off into space. I kind of see Tesla vibes of creativity, innovation, metal rocket ships, as well as kind of factory motifs with the gray. I've got no clue what's going on here, but it looks like kind of legs of a hind of a horse or a goat or something. The kiss. Unlike all Guste Rodin sculpture, The Kiss, featuring two figures entwined in an embrace of beauty, understanding and universal acceptance. This adaption depicts a scene set within a cowshed symbolic of the House of Representatives. <laughs> I have no... So I think they're commentating on that it's the House of Representatives is a bit of a mess. Oh, wait, no, there's more. So there's more. We're not just left there. In portraying, in portraying an act of defiance, the players both of indiscriminate characteristics and gender act out the scene by hiding their embrace behind a national, nationally iconic screen of corrugated iron. So they're not curtains. That's corrugated iron going on there. It is envisaged that viewers will pause a moment to reflect upon the time when members of the LGBTQI community were forced to meet under Cladenstein circumstances. It's really interesting that it's symbolic of the House of Representatives. And then we get there, but then it's also called The Kiss. That's a really interesting piece of work. I'm not sure that I can clearly connect those two paragraphs. Salmon, Hurstfield platform wall. I may have walked past this. The inspiration for this paint construction came while anxiously waiting at Hurstfield for the train home to Austinmere and contemplating. I get in. How do I get in closer to that one? Let's get a little bit of zoom in. Zoomy, zoomy in a little bit more. Let's get the writing up. Contemplating the long age carbon dark brick wall running the full length of platform four, the wall unfolds as a fascinating and metered procession of unexpected intervals, empty voids, odd signs, and peculiar graffiti. Vandal spray paint artistically injected into slotted Weep holes looks like pigment that once gushed from deep inside, then fanned out to beautifully cascade down the walls outside before cascade down the walls before drying. The train goes a long way, but the memories of my sadly departed Ros Ross Alba continue beyond this journey. Really, Paul Higgs. It's an interesting one. It's interesting the places with which inspiration 
is found. Very interesting. Observing that. What else is going on here? So we have an interesting people half in and out of water. Whoa. I've skipped across to the other half of the gallery. Uh, let's go back over view the dollhouse. Let's get back over to this side. See what the description is. What's going on here in this painting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people. Graham and Drendel. The deeper you go, oil on canvas. As happens with quite a few of my paintings, this one oh, surprised me. This one. Surprisingly leading me to where it wanted to go. It began with three figures standing on solid ground, one after another. More characters insinuated themselves into the composition. Then the water appeared. It's been suggested to me that the painting has embedded within it. This is suggested to me within it, the insecurity and tension we've endured through various lockdowns over the past year. We, mm, definitely the tension. Personally, I haven't had the insecurity, but many have with job loss, economic downturn, the small book businesses forced to close in our communities. The insecurity and tension we've endured through various lockdowns over the past year. The idea, that idea was in front of mind as I painted and is just one way of reading the work. My concern was simply to work with this disparate group of characters who have somehow converged together, marooned, perhaps connected only by coincidence, wading tentatively into deeper waters. Mm. Feeling the deeper waters on the day when New South Wales has recorded a record number of cases. Announced by New South Wales Health today. And here we have horse at a party. Oh, we, I hope that, that'll be great. Horse at a party? No, on the beach. Early in 2020, photographer Alex Koppel posted an extraordinary image on Instagram of New Year's Eve fires at Malula Bay on the south coast of New South Wales. When I contacted him to ask if I might attempt a painting based on it, he very generously agreed. The title of the painting refers to the 1957 novel by Neville Shute, which is set in Melbourne. Following a nuclear war, while nuclear conflict is still a threat, the world now faces the reality of global warming. The disease bears down on us all, but we must not forget the fires and other ecological crises that threaten Australia with the onset of climate damage. It's a really interesting photo. I wonder if I can text. Let's see if I can find that photo and bring that up on the screen. Ah, uh, here we go. I have found a version of it. Just need to open the image in a new term. Check that that's the correct image. How's it gone? So this is the original image of the horse on the beach with all the people milling around. This image was the one that was the in inspiration for the painting from Malula Bay. The people, the masks on for smoke haze at that stage to keep the smoke out of your lungs. A horse standing there brought into this picture 
you know, monks that it, that's a stunning depiction. I'm really impressed by that. That's a really nice piece of work there. I've got to, I've got to grab a piece of paper and write these down. The first, so far, my top spot is rosé and lemons. Then I think what's going on here of with to on the beach. Uh, Lua Bay. Right, this is an impressive piece of work. To think about and consider. So, on to the next room. So these aren't portraits. I don't think they're part of the Archibald prize. So let's just double check what, what is, what's on the map. View the floor plan. Yep. Young Archie. Then we have the win prize. So let's stick to the Archibald prize. Let's go kind of left to right. I do not. Recognize her necessarily. Self portrait. So Lucy Cullerton, a self portrait for this piece of art. My aunt, Karina Clark, designed and knitted the Bogong moth jumper I am wearing in the self portrait, says Lu Lucy Cullerton. Karina was a biologist, so she was my go to person when I found insects, creatures, or plants that I did not know or needed to know about. Karina also painted, gardened, and knitted. Her picture jumpers told stories. This Bogong moth jumper is the first of her picture jumpers that I plan to paint. I would have loved to have painted Karina wearing it, but she died in 2007. Collison, who lives and works in the, the Monaro in southern New South Wales, has been an Archibald finalist six times previously. Three of those works were self-portraits. This year's Archibald came around way too fast. I hadn't organized an important person to paint. So after I had painted the moth jumper on a hanger, I thought I could put be my subject modeling it. I painted myself in front of the mirror, taking great care to keep the jumper clean of paint, she says. Collison's still life painting of the jumper on a hanger is a finalist in this year's Solomon Prize. So that's a, a different gallery. So the Solomon Prize was there. So I didn't see that in there. So we can work with that. A really interesting kind of, oh, I've got to, I can see the moth now. Got to zoom in, but it becomes much clearer when you zoom in that you can see the moth detail on the chest with blue speckles on the wings. It's very interesting. Very interesting, this one. So feel free to comment along in the chat, comment below any questions you might have, comment what you find interesting, what you might like about some of these pieces of art. I'm wondering if there's a piece of glass over this. I've just got the reflection of the other side of the room. Yeah, I think it's got a reflection, reflection on this one. A little bit, because I can see yeah, the Archibald Prize. 
So there are some details that are not present because of the reflection. Peter Wegner, portrait of Guy Warren at 100 oil on canvas. Same year, the Archibald Prize was first awarded in 1921. Warren won the 1985 Archibald Prize with a portrait of artist Bert Flugelmann, which is included in the Archie 100 exhibition. This is the seventh time he has been included, has been an Archibald subject, including a self-portrait in 1996. I've been working on a series of drawings of people who have turned 100 and this was initially the reason I approached Guy. I've been aware of his work for many years, especially the portrait that won the 1985 Archibald. I chose to paint him because he is one of the most remarkable centenarians I've ever met. He still finds purpose in working in his studio daily, one of the traits he attributes to his longevity, says Wagner. When he placed his jumper over his shoulder, the pose was decided. This portrait honors Guy Warren in the 101st year of his productive and meaningful life. That is, a lo- that's a great story. That's one that captures portrait of Guy Wagner. Of Guy Warren. beautiful picture i think that this guy's getting up still going to the uh garden or the studio to continue his painting his impressive productivity centenarian one of the things about the barossa old vine charter they have centenarian centenary Centenarian, centenary vines, vines over a hundred years old. So this has got a photograph going on here. Ramesh and the artist Ramesh Oil and Linen, multidisciplinary artist who works with brims and bold beauty, visceral vitality in irreverent invention. Born in Sri Lanka in 1985, eight, he and his family came to Australia, and. He, as refugees in 1989, I met Ramesh after a talk he gave with my sitter from last year's Archibald Prize, artist Angela Tiata, during which he said it, it was a person's duty to protect and nurture the artist within themselves, almost as a separate entity. A vivid image sprang to my mind of Ramesh, the person holding the hand of Ramesh, the artist, says Jonathan Dalton. In essence, the painting is about the fragile relationship we have with ourselves as artists. Ramesh looks as us through the lens of our Hasselblad, Hasselblad, Hasselblad camera. Hasselblad cameras are incredibly expensive. I watched a YouTube video about Hasselblad cameras the other day. They've got a larger sensor size on the camera than other sensors, which contribute to the level of details of those images take the quality control is absolutely exceptional on those cameras they might only produce a few hundred each year but they retail around 40 to 50 to 60k they are an investment piece so it's shorthand for here for an artistic vision while a polaroid camera lies discarded on the floor littered with photographs of iconic works from the art gallery of new south wales collection photograph Photography has such a strangely collaborative and combative relationship with painting, yet somehow that tension creates incredibly rewarding, vibrant ideas. It exists both as a muse and a rival, a dichotomy paralleled in the two Ramesh's. It's a, I like that story. It goes with that. It captures what, what's inside. Yeah, any closer to this one? Nope, that's the closest I can get by the looks of things. Let's put the zoom on. Kirsty Nielsen, when Grace Tamed was named Australian of the Year, I was moved by her passion, strength, and bravery. 
Grace is a survivor of child sexual abuse and lent her story to Nina Funnell's acclaimed Let Her Speak campaign. She was instrumental in changing an archaic gag law in Tasmania that prevented victims from speaking out. Initially, I thought I needed to make the portrait more dramatic, but the longer I sat with Grace, the more the portrait became a reflection of our time together, and I saw her inner strength. Grace is wearing a white t-shirt, which has become an unofficial symbol of women's resistance. Resist, resistance. Grace has been a catalyst in exposing how people have been treated and helping create change. I have a strong sense of social justice myself and have worked with the organization Esther's Voice, which brings healing to girls rescued from sex trafficking in Cambodia. I believe abuse of any kind is unacceptable and we need to fight more for people's work. Let's continue the conversation. Nielsen is a Sydney-based artist who studied at the National Art School. This is her third time as a finalist in the Arch Award Prize. That is an absolutely incredible story, an absolute tragedy that the abuse happened in the first place, but to be able to share her voice as a survivor so strongly and advocate the government to change a law to allow those people who are vulnerable to have a voice is incredible. That is an awesome painting. That is going to be hard to beat. MC Nelson with Grace Tame. That is going to be very hard to beat. A shadow as well. Contrast of the light and the dark. That is an incredible story. Liking the contrasting colors and the come in here it's really well done 28 albums over 40 years hitting top 10 charts across five decades and won three ariel awards in 2014 she was the first woman and inducted into the australian songwriters hall of fame i first spoke to kate in early 2020 about collaborating on a portrait says Catherine longhurst a sydney-based artist she she had seen my work at the home of a mutual friends and asked if I was interested in painting for her next album cover. We attempted to get together several times, but lockdowns and border closures led to every trip being cancelled. In 2020, the pandemic decimated the entertainment industry. The extended lockdown in Melbourne had devastating consequences for Kate and many of her fellow performers but it ended up being an enormous year of growth and personal breakthroughs for her, culminating in her decision to move her family to Sydney to chase her, her work. This is when we finally met, although the album cover deadline expired, we decided to paint the portrait to create a record of Kate at this important moment in her life and as a legacy to her daughter. That is an awesome piece. Oh. Great piece of art. This painted on cardboard from an IKEA box by the looks of things. Let's 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 check that. Yeah. Right, four, two, four, two. Yep, that's that's Ikea. So I can I can tell you what box this was. How's that for an attention to detail to the artistic world? 
So I can tell, I can see the article number here on the box is 1030424242 for a Minen. So a Minen extendable bed. So uh, this painting is painted on an Ikea box that comes with an extendable bed for $119 from Ikea. You can get a package that you can paint an Archibald quality painting on if you have the skill to do that shows you can use anything as a canvas with portraiture i'm going to be really interested in reading about this particular painting because just noticing that part of the detail makes this painting even more Im impressive to think about and consider so Archibald Prize, 21 finalist, Filipina with, in collaboration, self-portrait in collaboration with Mayela Santiago Pearl, acrylic interior paint, pen and oil on found cardboard. So they found this Ikea box from somebody who had recently purchased this Ikea box. Self-portrait by... Mara Kit Santiago was created in collaboration with her seven-year-old daughter, Mayela Santiago Pearl. While motherhood is individual and unique, my work unifies the experience of others and reveals my personal bond with my children and others. My personal bond with my children, says Santiago, a Filipina Australian artist who won the Solomon Prize last year with a painting of her three children. Lupinia symbolizes bond by including painterly marks by my firstborn, Mayela, which weave in and out of the multiple layers. They create a vestige of her life now and our special collaboration. Kind of overlay that goes with that. Surely they've taken a picture and then done like cross section in Photoshop to make that happen. It's really impressive to see what you can do. It's really impressive. This one, oh, 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 where, where we go? Let's go back to the uh, iPhone selfie. There's a good angle for the iPhone selfie. Let's get in on that iPhone selfie. That's a nice iPhone selfie thing going on there and a painting on canvas. That's got some nice, nice things going on there. It's an interesting piece of work. Pop, pop the glass. Just taking this one in. Color the composition. I reckon they've done it almost like in a five by four ratio for like an Instagram style. I wonder how intentional that would be. It's come together that way. Oil and linen. Last year, Jade Ray was invited to participate in the Art Gallery of New South Wales online together an art project developed in response to the pandemic. She was asked to create and share an image that considered the view from her window. Consult. Oh. Construction site across the road from her studio, which dominated her response, is now 18 floors of affordable housing featured in this self portrait. The title inside. The title inside out seemed the best description. of the strange inversions of last year. Is this a standard selfie? An iPhone photo of me reflected in the window pane, inside looking out at my neighbor's lights, or am I taking a photo of you looking at me, living life on screen, as we do so often these days? Ooh, ooh, the meaning. The depth there, the two way, that's breaking the fourth dimension. Is that a photo of me watching her or is it a photo of her in a mirror 
with the neighbors in the background. That's breaking the fourth wall right there. That's impressive. It's really impressive. Looks a bit sullen. Paint portraits. You invariably, inevitably find yourself staring at random people's faces. Occasionally you see some of them is so, see one that is so compelling, the urge to paint them is overwhelming, says Nick Stanthopoulos. And so when he saw Tane Andrews, a Sydney-based artist who worked in a local gallery near Stan Officer's home, with the Bowie-esque sweat forward hair, there was something otherworldly and ethereal about him. Every time we visited, I would say to my partner, Adrian, that uh, he'd make a great portrait subject. This went on for so long after our last visit, an exasperated Adrian turned to me, me around, pushed me back in, and blurted out, just ask him. South Office was further inspired by the self-portrait of a young Felix Edouard Vallotton from 1885. I'd carried the idea of my portrait of Tain around in my head for ages. I sought to capture the this quiet in Vallotton's work. It was the mood that intrigued me. This is the seventh time Stathopoulos has been an Archibald finalist. He won the People's Choice in 2016 with the portrait of a Sudanese refugee and lawyer Deng Adut. This has got, I like the story behind that one. This is one of the ones I was excited about when I had a look earlier. Let's get right in. We can. Craig Foster. Fuzzy. Foz told me, oh, Julian Mega Fozzy. Julia Mega's subject is retired soccer player, Craig Foster AM. I met Foz a few years ago through a friend at Amnesty International when he was starting the game over campaign to the end the offshore refugee detention. Every one knows him as a sports commentator and former captain of the Socceroos. He's also recognized for his successful effort to free Hakim Ar Ariba when the Bahrainian refugee footballer was arrested in Thailand. This is Miga. Foz told me it was during the process of securing Hakim's safety in Australia that he realized he couldn't stop there. He's worked tirelessly ever since as an activist for freedom and equality. This is the second time I've painted him. Foz volunteers each week around the corner from my studio and often drops around afterwards. I decided I was going to keep painting him until a portrait was hung in the archboard as kind of a reflection of my of his own repeat efforts. It's inspirational. Boz is a fighter, though he's incredibly soft and caring as well. That's why I painted him with his eyes closed and his guard down. Even like this, he's still looking out for everyone. Craig, how's that Craig Foster? That was one that struck me when I first looked at it earlier. The story behind this. Dualism, I'm not particularly arts advocate. I'm not, I like the cutout, but I don't find it particularly inspiring. Or captivating. I'm interested about what's going on with the dog here in this painting. Inspired by storytelling and auspicious imagery, Kate Baton often features family and self portraiture in practice. Here she appears with her 22 year old son, Raleigh Bainon, an emerging artist and animator, and Tudo, their beloved 14 year old rescue, Staffy Cross. Recently, Kate and Raleigh collaborated on a series of small paintings of supernatural mask spirit figures drawing on their mixed cultural backgrounds, including Cantonese, Malaysian, Welsh slash Celtic, and Nordic. With Afro-Caribbean and Native American Pima ancestries from Kate's husband, 
and Riley's father, Mike, I depicted Riley Tudor and I wearing vibrant futuristic outfits adapted from the series imbued with talismanic elements. It's a way to embody a collaboration with raising the spirits during the anxious times. Says Kate, a nine time Archibald finalist. That was a mouthful. So, that is an amazing work of color, bright and beautiful. What else is going on here as part of this piece of art? That one, eh, that doesn't fit my definition of portraiture. It's a nice picture, but for Archibald Prize as a portrait, maybe not. Um, for prize for portrait painting, it helps break down the gallery. On a major cities. Wow, the winner receives a hundred thousand dollars courtesy of ANZ. The People's Choice Award is awarded to the most popular painting, is voted by the visitors, and the packing room prize is awarded by gallery staff who on pack the entries is that an entry find it i like c so i find it interesting really interesting let's just appreciate the painting let's step back let's get back a little bit get some perspective just appreciate the detail in the water that is a nice. I wish I had the wall space to hang that on. Massive quality there. I like the turmoil, tumultuous sea that goes into that. Oh, so we have some portraits here as well that I skimmed past before. They're all a bit small to properly see in this medium. Just quickly check in this gallery. Let's zoom out to the uh, floor plan. So that's the Archibald Prize. Young Archie in there. This is trippy that I'm going through. Yep. Okay, great. I mean, the kind of the final two rooms and the different kind of prizes in here. Let's zoom back in. So this is another captivating one. Let's just drop back out. So in terms of kind of this room, that's kind of like almost a portrait you'd see of a politician. Which I think it is. I think QC's Queen's Council, Governor of New South Wales, distinguished law career. Margaret Beasley has been a fierce advocate for women in the legal profession, appointed Queen's Council in 1989. In 1993, she became the first woman exclusively appointed as a judge of the Federal Court of Australia. Woof! That is an impressive story. This is what I've got to note down for some friends in law. I wish I could just kind of send a link to a picture in the gallery for people to look at. Wow, 1918. Was so when women were allowed to practice law. This painting was a commissioned court portrait. The sitting took place over eight meetings in my studio. At the time, the dynamics of power between women and men in Australian parliamentary system was being interrogated in the media. 
there remains a mission for women in institutions where power is shifting. The portrait represents the portrait represents her excellency as a strong example of women in the field of law, a true trailblazer. That is one I want to write down. That is an impressive story there. It's part of that. Poet, associate profession of Queensland University of Technology. All these people, I don't... Incredible looking there. Enjoying this virtual gallery experience. Just kind of wandering around. Seeing, oh, the texture, the detail in this one. This is an awkward angle to come at it from. The thoughtfulness, the lighting, the detail in the beard. This is another one that it's like, oof, it's breath, breathtaking. As a piece of art. Jeremy Eden's subject is the actor and director Faros Durrani, who is well known for his role in Underbelly, Golden Mile, House Husbands, and SAS Australia. I was intrigued by his acting style and personal liveliness, so dedicated to reach out and propose a collaboration for a portrait so that in a Sydney-based artist getting to know Faras gave me more insight into his personality. We met at my studio and had a great conversation about creating art and lifestyle changes due to the pandemic. He told me he had recently directed a short film titled Baba, a retelling of the story of his father growing up in Lebanon. We discussed the importance of diversity in the arts. And he said, diversity is all around us. And to see diverse faces exhibited in the 100th anniversary Art Jaboy Prize is just a beautiful notion. I knew I wanted to create a portrait that reflected his passion, vibrant personality, honesty, and energy. I painted over a period of four months, working from photos and drawings. This large close-up portrait with its heightened sense of detail displays every nuance of his face, showing personality as much as physical likeness. That's, that's, I appreciate the detail in that particular portrait. These ones are a bit interesting, but, uh, but it's an art gallery. This is the next section. There's a few lawyers in here. What else? Brim of the hat. That's vibrant. That's colorful. About friendship. It's very colorful. That's kind of... It's blotchy almost. You can see someone there. Head to toe. It's hard to tell. Dorian Gray. Picture of Dorian Gray for the theatre company. No face on that one. Who's this? Kerry O'Brien, someone in the newspaper, journalism. Kerry O'Brien, definitely one of good ones, a six-time Walkie Award winner, influential ABC broadcaster. No journalist who has made a greater contribution to our political discourse. 
impressive. This has got some interesting vibes to it. This looks like it's on fire. I'm enjoying the detail and the coloring of the clothing here. The folds that go into it as well. Green suit, self-portrait oil on canvas. My body is political. It holds multiple truths. I am at once femi, queer, and brown, a site for violence. Transgressions, tenderness, and joy, says Grantha Selvaraj. Interesting. Nation. Challenges the rigidity of institutions that carry colonial legacies. Despite these oppressive systems, I am also governed by a politics of tenderness and survival. This is seen in the vibrant and saturated colors that refuse to be suppressed. I like that color green. I'm liking the kind of fire and the texture going on here as part of this painting. Landscape and figurative painter who has been a finalist in Archibald Prize nine times. Wild overgrown. He had spent two weeks painting in the bush. This is Chen ever since the trip, which made a deep impression on me. I wanted to paint Joe sitting in front of a campfire at night, and I finally did it this year. See the fire reflected in Joe's face. After a day of traveling, he looked a bit tired, but you can see from his eyes that he's thinking, this is the real artist's life. This is Chen's ninth time in Archibald Prize. He's also a finalist in this year's Wins Prize. It's impressive work. The texture. The flames. I, I like a good fire. A good bonfire. With a nice glass of wine gathered around. Oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff going on there. The Archibald Prize is such an interesting thing. With the portraits of things. Oh, let's get a closer look at this one. Let's navigate back to this as we sip on a glass of wine. It's almost cartoonish, these two. I cannot figure out who they are of. It's not clear at all. Michael Snape and Victoria Atkinson's portrait. Trent Zimmerman, member of North Sydney. Trent mango tree or the colors of the rainbow Trent. Member of North Sydney in the Australian Parliament. It's interesting. I think that means my definite favorite for this piece of art this evening is this one. This one, the Grace Tame. That will be my choice for the Community Award, the People's Choice Award, Kirsty Nielsen's portrait of Grace Tame and the story that goes with it is incredibly captivating. I enjoy that it's also on a square. And I think it reminds me of the way it's composed and painted. I think it reminds me of the Rembrandt lighting that goes along with it. So, yeah, if you're tuning in, let me know what your favorite painting was. Comment below, comment below. Let me know what your favorite painting was in the series. My personal one was the Kirsty Nielsen one of Grace Tame. And thank you for joining along as we looked at wine, or we looked, sip, I sipped on wine, enjoying Lang Miles 2017 Colonel Cabernet Sauvignon as we sipped on that. It was absolutely delicious. The tannins were much softer than I what I expected. For Cabernet, it was quite juicy. It was a delicious wine to pair with an evening of virtual wine here this evening. 
but also having a few less glasses because it's a bit stronger in alcohol volume coming in at 15%. But an absolutely beautiful wine going with it. So thank you for tuning in this evening. I appreciate you. I am trying to stream 8 p.m. each Wednesday night as we are in the, continuing the Sydney lockdown. My plan is for next week's live stream, we'll be looking at the top 10 wines on Amazon. So tune in 8 p.m. next week to watch along for that. And I hope you enjoyed, yeah, that little tour in the art virtual wine galleries. If you're watching on the replay, would love a suggestion in terms of what um, you might be able to find in terms of other virtual art galleries I could do in the future and have a look at some of those. And if you're watching this and tuning in, you can potentially follow along, go to the link in description. There is a cash prize. So once you've enjoyed the Archibald Prize 2021 virtual visit, cast your vote in the ANZ People's Choice Award for your chance to win a $2,000 cash prize. The award also carries a $5,000 cash prize for the winning artist. So by watching this video and enjoying the art gallery, or you, it's really just from enjoying the art gallery, you can vote and win and cast your vote in the People's Choice Award and potentially win, go in the draw to win a $2,000 chance for a prize, which is awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you for participating this evening, watching along. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing if you're liking the content and make sure you leave a like to support the content that I'm creating. So videos like this can be supported suggested on YouTube to other people who might be interested in wine and virtual art gallery tours as we looked at the Art Tree Board Prize 2021 this evening. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Oh, I'll do that properly. And thank you for watching me. I'll see you in the next video. And remember that wine is best enjoyed with friends and family. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.